Sam, how are we doing today? Doing well, Josh. How are you? Good, thank you. You're getting ready for the end of the school year? Yeah, and graduation too. Yeah, are you excited? Very excited, yep. And next big step going to grad school, I hear? Grad school at Texas A&M, yeah. And very nice. Why'd you pick that school? Uh, it's one of the top programs for human resource management. Yep. I got in there, and I got in at the U of M in Ohio State, Michigan State, and after I... Wow. Yeah. Holy and cow. I after I evaluated the programs, I just felt like that was the best fit, yeah. so... Any ready to get out of this cold weather? I know that. Oh, one. God, yeah. I just can't, can't stand this cold weather. Right so, there. graduation uh, May 16th, is that what it is? It's not, yeah, something like that. I'm not yeah. even walking. So. Oh, you're not walking? Not walking, uh, no. Nope. Just want the diploma. Just want the diploma. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe we'll go back and see why you don't want, don't want to yeah. walk. Uh, today, I wanted to interview you about your tenure here at UW, kind of what your your favorite classes have been, your, your least favorite, why you chose university, um, and just get your, your overall opinion on the, the system. Yep. So first off, why did you uh, why did you choose UW? Yeah, well, that goes back, you know, four years to high school graduation yep. and my senior year when I was applying for colleges, and I uh, just didn't really know what I wanted to do. I had a few ideas, didn't really know where I wanted to go, just knew I wanted mm-hmm. to get away from home. And where's home? Superior, Wisconsin. Okay. Right. So I decided just to start researching some universities and ended up looking at uh, Eau Claire and then I started looking here. And I looked here because my aunt had graduated just a few years okay. before. And this is also where my dad went and played football. And so I just decided, hey, what the heck? Well, I got into both. And so yep. I decided, you know what, what the heck? Let's go to River Falls. So Now, did you have a tour here? Did you like the campus? Or didn't not? have a tour or anything. So same as me. I yeah. didn't have a tour at all either. The first, so. uh, my first day on campus was uh, my class registration. Okay. The and was, now, was that a little intimidating coming on a campus and not knowing where things were at and kind of having to look at the map and just kind of... Just get get thrown into the Falcon the Falcon way. Eh, not, not not too bad, you That's know. Bad. They they have a lot of they offered a lot of resources, and so those were there when needed and desired. Yeah. And just I like like figured out new stuff, so it's just kind of like a new experience, and it was really fun. Did you, you did you just find that a lot of the the professors and not not so much professors, but like uh, the all the student life people were a lot of help when you came on campus right away. Honestly, like actually, uh, it was a <clears> professor <throat> as the most help, and okay. the first. Uh, First day I was on campus for class registration, I met with uh, Dr. Travis Tubray, who was the advisor to my aunt when she was here in the psychology department, and yep. he definitely helped me accl- um, acclimate a lot to the life here on campus and stuff, and he's been my advisor now throughout the whole four years. So it's definitely, I would say, a tribute a lot of my six, early success. It helped you out a lot, you said? Yeah, oh my gosh. Did it yes. help when uh, you were getting the transitions out of grad school? Was that a big oh problem? yeah, absolutely. He helped me find programs, he helped yeah. me work my applications, and uh, he also helped me find access to a lot of the opportunities that yep. I think were key in me getting into grad school. Right on. So when you were filling out your application and you came here, did you uh, have a preference on dorm rooms when you stayed in? or you I Not really a preference, but I roomed my first year with one of my best friends growing up. Okay. And him and I roomed together. And it was all fine and stuff most of the time. He spent yeah. actually outside of the room, so okay. I pretty much had a room to myself. Right I on. lived over in... Uh, Johnson Hall on the okay, yeah. fourth floor. Yeah, that's where you and I met, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I uh, made a lot of friends there. Still talked to a lot of people that good. I uh, lived with there. But yeah, yeah, so it was a good time. And I know they always say the old adage is you don't want to room with someone that you're best friends with your first year. Did you find that to be true or not? Well, like guy? I said, uh, I would say uh, 90% of the time he wasn't even there. And the time yeah. that he was, we got along well. So it, I think, went really, really well. Um, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. We don't talk much anymore. We just, but not in a bad way. Just kind of went our separate ways. Separate ways. So, so you still you talking a little bit, but not much. Anymore. Every if I see him, yeah, around, I'll him. say hi to him and stuff. But and then you said you went to Superior with him when you were growing up. Yeah, he uh, grew up in Superior with me. Okay. So. So, did you stay in the dorms all four years, or did you just do this, the um, standard two and then move to no, the apartment? Uh, my freshman year, I stayed in a dorm. And then the fall of my sophomore year, it, I wasn't on campus. I was doing my internship in Disney okay. World. Oh, nice. And, That's right. Yeah. And um, I came back after that. So spring my sophomore year, I lived for a few weeks in Ames. The oh, sophomore Ames, Iowa, when yeah. they were new. Yep. Oh, not Ames, Iowa. Ames. Yeah. Ames as in the apartments on campus. Yeah. Very and good. then... That was only for a few weeks because I was on the wait list for a single room. Okay. And then I got into a single room over in uh, Crabtree. Yep, okay. And then my junior year, I spent the first, 
Gosh, uh, September through mid-November on campus at South Fork Suites. Oh, and yeah, then right I moved off campus to a house over behind Dick's Grocery Store where I've been living huh. ever since. Nice. So, so overall, it's, it's over the four years, how would you say uh, living on the UW campus has been for you? Has it been a positive and a negative? Um, I mean, living on campus was fine and all. It was just frustrating, I guess. It's, I've, to, in my opinion, for what's offered, it's really overpriced. It's yep. really expensive. Oh, yeah. And I have a lot of first-hand experience with that because I worked in the uh, Department of Residence Life for a year and a half, so I know a lot of the intricacies, and I just still think that it's not what you pay, you don't really get much out of it, and then also the dining plans are so expensive, and the food isn't all that great, you know, and so it's, I just, I have much more appreciated my time off campus than I did my time on campus. And how about off campus, things are more a little, more well, uh, Price a little better. Yeah, way more affordable, uh, both rent and food. I like to cook a lot, so yep. it offers me time to do a lot more of my you own You can do your own grocery stuff. shopping. Grocery shopping. Yep, camp, so yeah. it's been a lot better, actually. All right, very cool. To transition now from um, uh, living to the classes now, what was your major again? Psychology? Psychology, Okay, yep. and how did you pick psychology as your major? Uh, the first... Uh, okay, when I first was going to come in, I was going to be a psychology major, and that's why during my registration I met with uh, Dr. Travis Tubray. Mm-hmm. And then at the last minute, I decided to follow what was a lifelong dream, and I went pre med. Okay. And so for the first few weeks, I would, I would say for the first two weeks, I was pre med. And then after that, um, I went through this really ugly breakup with a girl back home, and we've been mm-hmm. together a really long time. It's yep. a really messy situation, um, and oftentimes when stuff like that happens, people just need to change, and so I just randomly decided to change the psychology. So I went, and I changed my major, switched almost all my classes that semester so I could fit in the psych classes I needed, and I've been a psych major ever since, and it's just been like the best thing I've ever done. And you're good. Uh, keep going with psych at in Texas A&M. Yes and no. I'm when I go to Texas A&M, I'm going into human resource management, so okay. I'm going more into the business world. Yeah. But I want to take some of the principles I've learned in psychology yep. and bring those into the uh, business world to enhance the business world and the practices. Right. On. So you mentioned this doctor that you had. A, have you had him as a professor a lot? Yeah, Travis. I've had as a professor for. Oh, five classes, three sessions of independent study, okay. uh, my internship credits, and so yeah, I've had a lot of opportunities uh, to interact with him. Him and I have also done research together and stuff, so it's been a, a really good relationship to have over the last few years. So would you say that he's your favorite professor on campus? Oh, absolutely. He's one of the best teachers I've ever had. He's a phenomenal oh, teacher. Cool. Nice. He's a really great guy, just, yeah. Now, is he your advisor as well, you said? He is or? my advisor, yep. Okay. So it's nice when you have all those three kind of encompass into one. Yeah. Um, so what, what would you say is, is uh, besides psychology, let's kind of get away from that, mm-hmm. what would you say is one of your uh, favorite other classes you've taken on campus? Uh, I like a lot of the business classes I've okay. taken. I did an option B minor, and okay. that's where I was able to take a lot of different types of classes, yeah. both extra psychology classes, communication courses, uh, business courses, and mold them into something that was – actually useful to me instead mm-hmm. of just doing a random minor yeah. because of the uh, past requirement. And I would say definitely a lot of the business courses because that's what, originally when I was in psychology, I wanted to go for industrial organizational psychology okay. and become a professor. And right. then the reason why I ended up deterring from that track is I was a TA for two years and I ended up just not liking it. Like, I really enjoyed the experience. It was a really fun time. Um, but it was really formative in the way that I made me realize I don't necessarily want to do that for the rest of my life. And so then, but I still wanted to take psychology principles and apply them to business. So I found the best way to do that was in HR. And that's when I started taking more of the business courses like accounting and finance and marketing and found that I really enjoyed them a lot. So what was your, uh, what is your option you want to call it? What did you you have a name for it? No, not really. Just took a bunch of your classes and mold them into one? Mold them all into one, yep. Yep. So what was, okay, so we talked about your favorite classes. What have been your least favorite classes to take on campus? Um, I would say probably some of those gen ed requirements. Yeah, well, some of them have been really great. Last semester I took uh, science and art with oh. uh, Dr. Eileen Is Brennick. that f- Physics 350? Physics 350, yep. Yeah, very nice. And it's actually been one of my favorite classes on campus outside my major just because uh, – 
uh, Dr. Krennic was really nice. She was really knowledgeable. She's yeah. really entertaining and made a class really just really fun and really enjoyable. And so even though it's like informational class I never use, it's still really cool information to have and just it was a fun time. That's funny you say that because I'm actually taking that class next semester. Really and class. I was very apprehensive because you see Physics 350 yeah. and it's like, oh no. But you, you actually look in a class and I hear it is one of the funnest classes. It is. To take on it campus. really is, yep. So what do you what do you plan to take in now we've talked about this, what do you plan to take in the future when you go to Texas A and M? Yeah. Do you want to further your education? So I'm gonna further my education in um, three different ways actually. The first is at Texas A and M I'm gonna get my master's in HR. Okay. And types of classes I'll be taking there will be like training and development, oh, yeah. um, yeah. organizational development, um, different selection classes. There's an entire class just based on employment law and stuff. Okay. There's a total of about 35 to 45 class credits that I'll be taking at Texas a and before my degree is finished, including a summer-long paid internship okay. for just um, basic experience. So yeah. I'll be going for my master's there. And then another thing I'll be doing is at some point in the next year or so, I'll be registering for classes at UW-Stout for it's an online certification in, in um, instructional design, which okay. is designing uh, training programs for companies and so it's just a four class certification it's not even like a degree or anything but it helps uh the classes will better teach me how to design training programs and there's like a whole class just on taking um current programs and designing them then into computer-based programs and right stuff on. and which a lot of companies are doing because it's very cost and time effective and so I'll get that, I'll be getting that certification. And then I'll also, one certification I've been kind of toying around with is it's called the Lean Sigma 6. Okay. And it's a certification that was originally developed by the Motorola company. Okay. Uh, and they originally developed this program when they were, when one of their biggest um, products they were producing was uh, the semiconductors. Yeah. And the reason why they developed this is, is that's a very expensive process and they noticed there was a lot of waste in it and a lot of redundancies and inefficiencies. And so they developed this process to reduce that so they could increase the profit margin. Yeah. They found that it worked really well. When they found that that worked really well, they thought, okay, let's see if we can apply it to other products we developed. Found it worked really well. Then they said, okay, well, let's see if we can develop, to, uh, develop it for other departments. Again, it worked really well. And at that point, they're then like, well, what did this work for other companies? And so now companies all around the world use this to reduce inefficiencies and to eliminate redundancies. And so it's a really great... Um, certification to have because it's a uh, you can really help a company become more mm -hmm. efficient it's something all companies really want to do and the reason why I want all these different certifications and educations and certifications is because I eventually want to as starting on the side but eventually hopefully grow it into full-time is start my own consulting business for smaller okay. companies um, or even some larger companies who need help in either creating or reevaluating, redesigning their HR practices, departments, and so on and so forth and yeah. stuff. Seems like you got your head on right. And knowing Hopefully, you do, yeah. Seems like you got a good plan out. So, one final question here, and then we'll wrap up. What uh, going back to uh, River Falls? What do you think? I know with all the all the problems we've had going on here right now in the whole Yuba system. Um, what do you think the biggest thing River Falls can do to kind of keep attracting people and keep uh, the students here and not to transfer? Yeah, well, I guess like the first thing that I would say about all that is that the budget cuts are inevitable. So yeah. it's like, you know, people keep saying like, we don't want them to happen and stuff, but it's like, it's happening. So your question's really good because there are things that need to be happening. And going back to one of the things I was saying is I think the university could seriously eliminate inefficiencies, redundancies. Yeah. I think there's a lot of positions both at the faculty level and at the student level that don't necessarily need to exist yeah. and not in a bad way. I'm not saying like, I don't want people to lose your oh, job. Like, that's how, yeah. I'm not trying to be, you know, like a heartless no, person. Exactly. But there are, I think a lot of ways in which things could be changed to run more efficiently with mm -hmm. less redundancies in order yeah. to save money. Well, Sam, thank you very much. Yeah, I thank appreciate you, it. Have a good day and good yeah. luck at Texas A&M. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right.